and welcome everyone. Do you know, <laughs> this particular subject is the um, cause of all kinds of problems for people and is the cause of all kinds of joy for others. We've got to grasp the idea that everything that comes into our life, we've attracted. We attract everything that comes to us. And we attract it because we're in harmony with it. Think of this for a moment. Take this stuff. Most people are not in harmony with money. They're really not. Um, the average person is struggling all the way through their life. And they saw their parents struggle, and they're doing the same thing. School does not teach us how to earn money. Most people's attitude towards money is very confused because they really don't understand. And we've been raised to believe you go to work to earn money. Just go to work. Well, going to work is not the answer to earn money. And if you have any question about this, I want you to think of um, somebody that's working real hard. When I say that, I think of somebody maybe in the southern part of the hemisphere where it's very, very hot, might be up over 100 degrees, and they're on the road with one of those jackhammers breaking up concrete or something. Those people don't earn very much money. Now, that's just about as hard a work as you're going to find. You provide service to earn money. You don't work. You provide service. I want you to think of some of the great recording stars. They um, earn millions, literally millions of dollars. And they really don't work at all. They sing. They get together and they jam with different groups. and They go on stage and they sing. But they got their recordings playing all the time. Millions of people are being entertained. And that's why they're earning so much money. They're providing a service. Well, we want to hit on that. We want to hit on attitude. We want to hit on the laws. So let's really take a look at this today. Here's what I want you to stop and think about. I want you to look at the areas of your life that your paradigm has an enormous control over it. Your paradigm controls your perception, and your perception is your reality. It's how you see life. I love the way our dear friend Wayne Dyer um, is gone now, God bless him, but he put it very well. He said, when you change the way you look at something, what you look at changes. And of course, that's right. That's your perception. Perception is one of those higher faculties. It's like uh, perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuition. That, that's what makes us who we are. That's what separates us from all the rest of the animal kingdom. They operate by instinct, which is perfect. We've been given these higher faculties, and through the proper use of these higher faculties, we can create our whole world. Now, your perception, it's how you look at something that's going to determine your reality. Well, your paradigm controls your perception. Now, let's take a look at this. Your paradigm controls your use of time. Do you know everybody gets exactly the same amount of time? They get all there is. So it's what we do with our time that really makes the difference. Our paradigm controls our creativity. Now, think of this for a moment. When I was a kid in school, and I went to a, a public school in Toronto, and in grade eight, I was leaving and I was going to go on to high school. Miss Strun was my teacher. She was a lovely lady. And she said, Bob, where are you going to go? And I said, I'm going up to Melbourne Collegiate. Oh, Bob, don't go there. You will never do well in the business world, Bob. Go to Danforth Tech and get a trade. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I thought this woman was like God. She knew everything. And um, I went to Danforth Tech. I was there less than a month, and I shoved this thumb into a bandsaw cut the end of it off, they sewed it back on. And you know when it's cold, that still hurts. All these 50 some years, 60 years later. Now, Miss Strong was wrong. Here's a person in a position of authority and I was letting her influence me. I'm actually extremely creative. Um, I've done very well in the business world. 
I've helped some of the largest companies in the world increase their business by millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, this is no joke, and I've worked all over the world. So she couldn't have been more wrong. So I went out until I was 26, knocking my head against the wall, trying to figure it out. You are creative. You are, you've got all the creativity there is. There's no one that's more creative than another. It's just that one person's utilizing their creative ability more than another, okay? Your effectiveness, that's controlled to an enormous degree by your paradigm, just how effective you are. You see, your, your paradigm is the program that controls your behavior. And it's your behavior that dictates how, how effective you are. Now, as you improve your effectiveness, your productivity goes up. Now, this is all controlled by paradigms. This controls our attitude. It controls everything. Now, keep going here. It controls our logic. That's why everyone thought the Wright brothers were actually crazy. Here's two bicycle mechanics... And they're going to fly through the air. The American government had spent millions of dollars attempting to figure out how to get a plane in the air. They couldn't do it. It was believed it couldn't be done. But those two Wright brothers, they worked with the law. They had the image in their mind. They're saying, I see it, brother, I see it. <laughs> um, they stepped aside. They didn't let logic stop them. Well, make up your mind. That's this idea of you've got to be realistic, that you've got to be logical, is a bunch of nonsense. You don't have to be logical at all. I've been totally illogical many times, and it's helped me earn a lot of money. It's helped me have a lot of fun. You've got to bust out of that. Now, the last part here, it controls your ability to earn money. You see, one of the first things I ask a person if I'm starting to work with them, what is the most you've ever earned in a year? I don't really care what the answer is. It doesn't make any difference what the answer is. But I want to know the answer because that is going to tell me where their paradigm is set. Your income is a reflection of your own paradigm. And if you want to change your income, you've got to change the paradigm. And you may not believe that, but it's still true. Keep in mind, I've studied this every day now for 60 years, seriously study with some of the most brilliant minds in the world. Now, it almost appears as if there's a box around those areas, and every time we go to move one of them, we hit the wall and bounce back. Now, watch closely. What you want to do when you decide to change the paradigm, just the decision is made, the wall comes down. Now, that doesn't mean you've changed anything, but the wall comes down. In other words, when you go to move in that area, you're not hitting the wall. You're able to go and move. Now, think of this. I want you to just imagine for a moment. Watch this carefully. I want you to imagine how much your life will change as you begin improving any or all of these areas of your life. That change is going to be huge. It will be huge. And get this, the change is going to be permanent. This is a beautiful thing to know. Look at, when Ray gave me this book and he got me studying it and my income started to go up, up, up. It's never gone back. Now I've made mistakes and lost, but I just keep moving ahead. The change is huge and it's permanent. You've often heard the saying, you can't go back. Well, that's not physically, that's mentally. You cannot go back mentally. Because you see, what you're doing is you're creating an awareness. And once you become aware, nobody can take that away from you. Once you become aware of how money's earned, nobody can take that away from you. Once you become aware of what the wealthy people really know, nobody can take that away from you. Now think about this. This is very important. Okay. If you just changed your perception, you really work at that. How could you do that? Well, I'll give you an exercise you can do. If I have a particular challenge that I'm really wrestling with and I'm not quite sure what to do, I will take my pen and I'll take a pad and I'll write out my problem as I understand it. 
as clear as I possibly can. After it have got it written out, I'll put it in the center of the desk and I'll go and sit on the other side of the desk and I'll look at it and I'll say, how would Earl Nightingale have looked at this? And I'll look at it from a totally different perspective. Then I'll go and sit in another part of the table and I'll look at it. I'll say, how would Napoleon Hill look at this? And what I'm doing, I'm shifting my perception of the situation. And you know something? Problem usually goes away when you change your perception. And that's when your income starts to go up. It's so beautiful and yet it's so misunderstood. Now, Napoleon Hill talks about the big money. And he has an excellent article written on it in his materials. And he's talking about the people that get into the big money. They lock into a power of life. And he said the power could be compared to a river. And he said, except that one side of the river flows in one direction and the other side of the river flows in the other direction. Now, if you're in the side of the river that takes you to poverty and wretchedness, he said, you could use this concept as an oar to flip your boat over onto the other side of the river. And he said, the other side of the river leads to prosperity, leads to opulence, leads to all the good things in life. And he pointed out that it's really our attitude, it's our perception, it's the way we look at it. If you want to get into the big money. Now, big is a relative term. If you're earning $100,000 a year and you go to 300,000, that's a big jump. If you're earning uh, $20,000 a year and you go to 60,000, that's a big jump. See, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. It's how you view it, it's how you look at it. Now, let's think of this for a moment. <clears throat> We've talked about this. Look at each of these lines and let them represent a level of vibration, okay? Really think. We refer to each level of vibration as a frequency, okay? Now your cell phone, we keep operating, talking on this because everybody's got one, operates on a frequency, but everybody's cell phone operates on a frequency. Now we've talked about this before. It's the repetition that sinks the idea in your mind, okay? When you get on another person's frequency, you're one with them, magic happens. Because you're communicating, you're on the same frequency. It's such a beautiful thing to understand. Everything you want, everything you want, is also on its own frequency. You see, all we have to do is get on to the frequency of the good that we desire. When we do this, it starts to flow to us. Now, a good part of today's lesson is going to be focused on money. And I think that's something you'd all like to attract. But keep thinking. Look at your present results right now. You can only attract what you're in harmony with. So take a look at your income. Take a look at your income right now. If you're in sales, take a look at your sales. I don't care what you're doing. Take a look at the results. That's telling you the frequency that you're living on. We can adjust the frequency, you can, I can. Now most people have difficulty taking it ahead, they don't have any difficulty going back and they do that. It's like he said, you know, you can connect the dots looking backwards but not forwards, okay? So energy attracts like energy. Now what kind of a vibration are you in? What kind of a frequency are you operating on? Now, I really want you to play with this. I want you to think about it because you can do anything you want. I want you to make a decision to become one with what you want and quit listening to people that tell you why you can't get it. Are you daydreaming? Are you crazy? You got to be logical. You got to be realistic. No, you don't. <clears throat> you do not. The Wright brothers were not realistic. Uh, Edmund Hillary went to top of Mount Everest, the first guy that did it. He wasn't being realistic. Um, Edison had illuminated the whole world. He wasn't being realistic. Listen, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand, and that's what we're talking about. It's all done by law. Now look, it. we talked about this. There's your thinking mind. And what we want to do in this 
session that we're going through from Monday to Friday, we want you to build a new image of yourself. In other words, I want you to see, and that doesn't mean that you're not doing well, it means that you're going to do better, that's all it means. I want you to see in your mind yourself doing what you really want to do. Make up your mind. Now we know that our senses, we're gonna get bombed and bingo, negative's gonna come flying in here. Why? Because we attract it relative to the new image, okay? So we've got to stop that. How do you stop it? Well, you make a decision. When you make a decision, you just block that out of your mind, and then you let yourself get emotionally involved in this new picture. And just look at that for a moment. You're building an idea in your mind, and you're letting yourself get emotionally involved with it. Isn't that what the actors do? They get a script, they read the script, they reread the script, they memorize the script, they internalize the script, and they become one with that script. That's what we're talking about here. Become one with the good that you desire. When you do that, everything starts to change. All the negativity, it was there yesterday, it's gone. Now, is it really gone? No, it's not gone. It's like Warner Von Braun says, nothing disappears without a trace but it's gone from controlling us. We are changing the paradigm. We're doing it through our own conscious choice. We're making up our mind we're gonna go where we really wanna go. Now keep this in mind. We've gotta know what attitude is. We've gotta have the attitude of gratitude and we've gotta see ourselves as wealthy individuals. Prosperity should be your way of thinking. When this power flows in, you create thoughts. You literally create thoughts or you're picking them up from outside. But this power flows into our consciousness and we literally start to think. We activate our imagination or our reasoning factor and we start to choose thoughts. Now when we do that, we impress them upon our subconscious mind, but we also send them off into the universe. Now whatever you send into the universe, the universe sends right back at you. And when it's coming back, that's your law of attraction. Now stay with me here. This is so important. Those feelings then are expressed with and through the body, but you also shove them off into the universe. You often pick up another person's feeling. You'll be with them sometime and maybe some, something really phenomenal has happened. They say, what's happened? Share with me, tell me. Just their thought of it, you picked it up, okay? Now because those feelings went into the body, the body expresses them in action and produces the results that you're getting. So it's bingo, one, two, three, thoughts, feelings, and actions, and it produces the results you're getting. See, your attitude is the composite of thoughts, feelings, and actions. You wanna build an attitude that you're prosperous. Start to see yourself with what you really want. See yourself with the good that you desire. Build the image in your mind and get emotionally involved with it. That's how desire is built. Desire is the idea that's been planted in the subconscious mind that you keep feeding. And so the idea grows. That's what desire is. Waddle said it's the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your action. And that's how desire works. Now look it. We want you to go after your goal. We want you to go after a big goal financially. In other words, get up on the high wires. Don't mess around with anything down there. Got to make a decision, and it must be a committed decision. Then you want to discipline yourself, and that's giving yourself a command and then following it. So you're making a decision, and then you're disciplining yourself to execute that decision. Okay? Now, this is all done with the mind. The mind separates you from all other life. This is you. You're an individualized expression of an infinite power. And when it comes to money, there's an infinite source of supply that's the most accurate tool to measure results. You can measure money to the penny. Now, you can go to a doctor and you're going to find out whether you're healthy or not. And the doctor said, you're in great shape. That's happened to many people that walk right out and drop dead. They weren't in great shape at all. See, health isn't something you can measure as accurately. You just can't do it. But money, you can measure it to the penny. 
So you know whether you're progressing or not. You can say, well, I feel better, you know, so I must be pretty good. You know? No, no. But with money, it's to the penny. So you take a look at your income. And if your income is not continually going up, if it's not just continually growing, you're not following the laws properly. You're just not doing it. And now this is where Fuller comes in again. He said, you never fight things by exist changing. You never change things by fighting existing reality. To change things, you have to build a new model. And that's what we want you to do. Build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. In other words, control the flow of the thought energy. Let it flow freely to and through you, improving everything with which it connects. Now, you can do this and zero right in on money. And that's what we're talking about today. You say money's not everything. I never said it was. But I'm going to tell you something that's very important. Now, think of this. You're a mass of energy, and you function on frequency. Okay? Now, look at this. I'm going to show you something else. See this? This is energy, too. If you get on the frequency this is on, you can't stop it coming. What did he say in here? He said, when the money starts coming, it'll come so fast and furious, you're going to wonder where it was hiding through all the lean years. And he's right. Most people don't understand that. They do not understand. They think you've got to go to work. you just got to work a little harder. Get out there. Put in more hours. Wrong track. Now, look it. Einstein gave us some wonderful information. He said the intuitive mind, that's the higher faculties, is a sacred gift. The rational mind's a faithful servant. That's our senses. Okay? We've reached, we've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Well, we want to start using these higher faculties. That's how you're going to create the wealth. I showed you this yesterday, and I'm going to touch on it once today, but I want, you, I want you to get this. I want you to copy this down, and I want you to pay attention to it. And you just repeat this over and over and over again. Genevieve Birand uh, was a student of Thomas Troward. Thomas Troward, I believe, is one of the greatest authors of the last 500 years. Uh, this is one of his books that I have in a book stand here in front of my desk. I read those two pages every day, have for quite a while. It's Thomas Troward's work. Well, Genevieve Birand was his only student. She had to attract $20,000 in 1912 to go and work with him. And it's through studying what I'm putting on the screen here that enabled her to do it. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to grasp this overnight. You've got to keep reading it over and over and over. My mind is a center of divine operation. What do you mean, my mind's a center of divine operation? Now, look at, think about this for a moment. Everything has a center. If I have a basketball, there's a point in that ball that's center, and that's determined by the outer side of the ball. There's a point in this room that's center, and that's determined by the outer measurements of the room. But when you get to the divine, when you get to God, to spirit, there is no outer measurements. You're talking about infinite. When you're talking about infinite, any point is center. My mind is the center of divine operations. So is yours. So is your next door neighbors. My mind's the center of divine operation. Now, the divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before. This is not a this is not a repeat performance for you. We're going somewhere where you've never been. Remember when we told you that X out there? Well, the X out there is a place. If your imagination takes you there, you went somewhere. That is a place. And you can grow into that. You can. This means the production of something that's gone on before, beyond and has gone on before. Something entirely new. This is True creativity, something entirely new, not included in your past experience. However, though it's proceeding out of your past experience by an orderly sequence of growth. Now listen to me for a minute. Do you know that everything that's happened in your past has been necessary for you to get where you are? You know, all the good times and all the bad times, they're all necessary. 
every one of them, everything that's happened has contributed to the conscious awareness that you have. So this is going to be something new that you're bringing about. It's something that's not included in your past experience, though it is proceeding out of your past experience by an orderly sequence of growth. You see, it's what you've done to this point that enables you to see how to go further. This is such a phenomenal piece of literature. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, see, the laws of the universe were not man-made, so they can't be changed by man. Winter always follows winter. Always. The night always follows the day. Think of this. Since the divine could not change its inherent nature, now pay attention, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my special world, of which I am center, it's going to move me forward to produce new conditions, always in advance of any that has gone before. If and when I get in harmony with this power, that's what's going to happen. I would recommend you write this down. It may be out of the park to you right now. It's going to be closer than your breath if you keep studying it. This I know to be true. I've worked with it for many, many years. Okay. Now, one of the laws is the law of compensation. Your income is governed by law. And it's a law that you're never going to change. The law of compensation is very clear. This law clearly states that the amount of money you earn is always going to be in an exact ratio to three things. Number one, the need for what you do. Number two, your ability to do it. And number three, the difficulty there will be in replacing you. Now, pay real close attention to those three steps. I'm telling you, I feel blessed. I truly do. When I read this, and I couldn't stop reading it, and I'm still reading it. I was living in England. I was earning all kinds of money. I owned the company. We operated in seven different cities, in Canada, the U.S., and England. And uh, I left that, and I took a job for $18,000 a year. I wanted to work with Earl Nightingale. I had an innate awareness that that's what I was supposed to do. Everyone was telling me I was crazy. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but I was following my feelings. Feeling is conscious awareness of vibration. I really believe I was guided. I truly do. Because I'm in an industry now, I believe this is the highest paid industry in the world. I don't believe anyone can earn as much money as we can earn. Now, are there people earning more money than us? Absolutely. But you know something? When we really lock into this and do it, we're going to earn more. Why? First thing, it's the need for what we do. Do you know what I've learned over the past 60 years? What we are doing, people need all over the world. I've been to Kota Kinabalu. Used to be Borneo, a part of Malaysia, way off in the coast. I've been down to Buenos Aires. I've been in Shanghai. I've been in New York. In London, England. In Dusseldorf. Everywhere we've gone, they need what we've got. You need this. You may not know you need it, but you need it. You need to have an understanding of what makes you tick and how you can move ahead. It's the need for what you do. Second, your ability to do it. And third, the difficulty there will be in replacing you. Now, here's what Earl Nightingale taught me in spades. 
He said, Bob, all you have to focus on is the second step, your ability to do it. He called this the formula. I remember he had a little sticker he'd put on things that called the formula. The law of compensation was, he referred to as the formula. You see, if I keep getting better at what I'm doing, I'm gonna be harder to replace. The people that are hardest to replace, they're the ones where their stock goes up. Let's take, um, I don't know, a waiter in a fast food restaurant. There's not the great a need for them as there is for what we do here. In fact, I don't know if you can find anything where there's a greater need than what we do. So as Earl pointed out, Bob, all you have to do is apply yourself to what you're doing. Now he said, you're a pretty good student. You're always asking me about books. In fact, it was a book holder that I got the idea from him because he had a book holder on his desk. Look at this. See? It's a book holder, holds a book open. It sits in your desk. I asked him, I said, why you've got that? He said, because I want to read those pages every day for, I don't know, maybe three months, six months. And I said, why are you doing that? He says, repetition, you've got to get in your subconscious mind. Well, I sort of knew that, but I started to gain a different appreciation of it. Now he said, if you study this every day, I study it every day, you're going to get better. And I keep getting better at it. And because I keep getting better, I keep earning more. Now look at Everyone wants freedom. Everyone wants freedom. They want time and money freedom. You see, you're going to be amazed how much free time you have when you never have to think about money. I often talk to Sandy about that my business partner. And we sit and talk about it. We have some real serious talks about it. And of course, because we're both working at it and get the company working at it. I talked to Mikey about it. I talked to Arashua. I talked to the various people in the company. It's just, it's just fun talking about this because we're experiencing it. It's so accurate. Okay? Now look at There's three income earning strategies, just three. M1, M2, and M3. Now, if you're interested in teaching your children how to earn money, and you should be if you're not, uh, because school's not teaching them how to earn money, and there's where you want to focus. I have a young grandson. I was, quite frankly, I was pretty concerned about because he seemed to have dumb jobs that paid very little and uh, I thought, you know, the kid's got to wake up. And then I find out he just bought himself a business. And the business is starting to flourish. He's getting a good education in entrepreneurship. I'm so happy for him. And so I let him know that I'm happy for him. I keep checking on him. How are you doing? Do you need any help? Is this just, you see, I want him to stay focused on M3. And if you're not on M3, get on it. Now look here. This is important. M1 is the worst strategy in the world, and it's used by 96% of the population. And they are following a strategy that doesn't work. It's got an inherent problem. It's where you trade time for money. The problem here is saturation. You run out of time. I don't care what you're charging an hour. Saturation is the problem. You run out of time. M2 is a good strategy, but it's only used by 3% of the population for a good reason. This is where you invest money to earn money. Well, you gotta have money to invest if you're gonna invest it. So what happens? Well, the people in M1, they, they've heard about this M2, and they think, man, I'd like to do that. You don't have to even work, and the money earns money. And so they squirrel a little bit away out of what they're earning, which is tough. And so they deprive themselves of the car they want or the house they want because they're saving for their old age. This is nuts. And at any rate, um, they invest a little bit. And they didn't know what they were doing, and they lost it. See, M2, you really have to know what you're doing. 
And if you don't, you want to get damn good advice. Now, M3 is something I stumbled on way back in the 60s. It's only used by 1% of the population, but they are 96% of all the money that's being earned. I'm going to tell you, I started earning money. It started like it was just flowing to me from every angle. I couldn't get over how easy it was and how simple it was. I had been working really hard up to this point, and all of a sudden, I had no idea what I was doing. I was an excellent example of what you call an unconscious competent. Listen to this. You do not have to be the smartest cat in town to earn a lot of money. As a matter of fact, you can be pretty dumb and earn a lot of money. I was pretty dumb, and I was earning a lot of money. So when people tell me you've got to be smart to earn a lot of money, I know that's not true, because I knew I wasn't very smart, and I was earning a lot of money. Now I've become a little smarter because I've never stopped studying and really inf just, uh, very serious information. But when it first happened, I didn't know much. You see, this 1% earned 96% of all the money, and that is because... They multiply their time by setting up multiple sources of income. They don't have one source of income. They've got all kinds of sources of income. Do you want a God's truth? I don't know how many sources of income. I really do not know. I'm not being cute. I don't know. In fact, I'm not really that interested in knowing. I'm interested in knowing I'm setting up more sources. I have people looking after them for me. I have other people looking after stuff for me. And I'd recommend you maybe follow this pattern. Now look it. We can show you how to turn your annual income into a monthly income. Now I often say the, the only reason a person's earning $100,000 a year, they're not earning because they earn, want to earn a hundred. They're earning a hundred a year because they're not aware of how to earn a hundred a month. This is all consciousness that we're talking about. It's vitally important you get this straight. Now look at this can be accomplished by having multiple sources of income. Wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources. Go back and do, do your research. I've, I've studied this. I've studied it for a long time. You go right back to the ancient Babylonians, a very wealthy sect of people in biblical times. They understood this. They had multiple sources of income, okay? Now look at Our world is changing, and it's changing at a very rapid clip, and I'm gonna let you in on some news. It's not getting bigger. Our world is getting smaller. It is, and the world is getting smaller, and we're only hours away from anywhere in the world. And you know that you, if you can hear my voice, you can have business in multiple locations today all over the world. I think I told you. I was sitting on a sofa in a den in a house on Maplewood Lane in Glenview, Illinois. And I wrote out that I would have a company that operates all over the world. Now, I've had to get a lot of help because I was sitting there on the sofa. I was alone. That was it. I have attracted some phenomenal people to work with. Everybody you see coming on this screen, they are top-notch people. At any rate, Mikey phoned me because she knew that was a goal of mine from 1973. And she said, Bob, are you sitting down? Well, the truth was I had just got up. And she said, I just heard from Betty, we are in every country in the world. Now, I mentioned this before. I think somebody says there's about 180 countries. It was over 200 places we were in. There's countries like, like I say, Guam is not a country, but it's, you know. Now, think. Big deal. Money is attracted to me. Now, that's not for me. That's for you. I want you to repeat that. I want you to say that. Say it out loud. Speak it out loud right now. Money is attracted to me. Money is attracted to me. 
Money's attracted to me. Now, there's probably something in your paradigm saying that, that I don't think that's a good thing to say. That's a real good thing to say. Because I'm going to tell you something. This stuff is a servant. And you know you can do a lot more good this when you can without it. But start repeating this now. Money is attracted to me. I've got it, another affirmation I've got. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. Now look, it. you can set up sources of income all over the world. You'll never have a better chance than just the people you're meeting on this call. If you're chitty chatting with them, and I imagine some of you are, you can make a connection with somebody on the other side of the world. You could become an affiliate of theirs or they could become one of yours. See, this group that we attract to us, they're an incredible group of people. Do you know there's 55,500 people registered for this particular program? That's a lot of people. They're people you can connect with. Just because you're connected with us, you're going to be connected to them. And you can keep setting up multiple sources of income all over the globe without ever leaving home. There's no end to how many you can have. You can have an infinite source of them. There's no lack, no limitation. You are God's highest form of creation. These are all sources of income. Now, are they all the same size? It looks like they are. No, they're not all the same size. Some will get big and some will get small. But look carefully at it. Watch it really carefully because there's some common denominator. Every one of them flow into your bank. Some will be big and some will be small. And they flow in from all different parts of the world, different denominations. But your bank will turn them all into the currency you use. It's such a wonderful concept. I want to suggest you pick a target that you will reach in the next 30 days. Set up one, two, maybe three sources of income. This is a focus you're going to get. And you're really going to make it work. There is no end to what you're capable of doing. Once you get into this vibration, you'll start attracting things. Opportunities are just going to pop up everywhere you go. If you stay close to us, the Proctor Gallagher Institute, we take pride in bringing creative minds together so they can set up proper enterprise where they can not only help themselves, but they help thousands of others too. That's really the name of the game. Now look here on this slide for a second. The mind separates you from all other life, your mind. The money is the most accurate tool for measuring your growth. I'm always looking at what I'm earning because it tells me if I'm growing. Okay? Now, I want you to make a decision, a committed decision, and then I want you to discipline yourself to give yourself a command and follow it. Now, I'm going to turn this over to my good friend and yours, Arash Vasagi. And he will give some direction from what we've been talking about. I want to thank you for listening to me. And I'm praying to God you get this. Study that, my mind's a center of, study it every day. Arash, take it away, my friend.